Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and I'm here in the Appalachian Mountains at about 2,700 feet in far southwest Virginia. I've got about 50 acres here, and I have walked this property for 12 years. And this weekend, I found a tree that I've never seen before anywhere in the state of Virginia, or anywhere for that matter. The tree is a big tooth aspen. And I had to get several people to come in with me and figure this out because it was so unusual for us. Why is it so unusual? This is a tree that is best known in the Great Lakes region and New England. So let me tell you in this video how I found it, why it's so unusual here, and some really interesting things about its biology and some connections about why this massive tree is here in the middle of all these pines. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So let me begin this story by telling you, I've walked down this trail many, many times for actually for years and never noticed this tree. It's November 2nd and I was walking down the trail and all I saw were brown leaves. Pine needles from white pines, Virginia pines and pitch pines, a few maple leaves, some oak tree, white oak leaves, some chestnut oak leaves, and all just kind of brown. Then all of a sudden I get into a bright patch of yellow. And first I think, oh, that's maple or uh, tulip poplar. And then I look closely and I saw the tooth edge. I didn't know what it was. My first guess, which was, would have been a cottonwood, and that's kind of unusual here. But when I looked at the tooth leaves and then found a confirming piece of evidence to absolutely, definitely identify this as a big tooth aspen, what is that feature? Well, I picked up the leaf and I found it had flat petioles. When you identify trees, I use uh, the odor of the leaf or twig. I look at the shape of the leaf. I look at the bark of the tree. I look at uh, where it's living. But I've never looked at the shape of the petiole till now. And a flat petiole is distinctive for quaking aspen and for big tooth aspen. Another thing I think I need to add into my repertoire of tree identification and using multiple senses and I think that's of hearing. Because I read that this tree will have leaves because of that flat petiole that will quake or tremble in the wind just like a quaking aspen. And sure enough, I stood under the tree and I heard this sound and I knew that this was a big tooth aspen. And I looked up and sure enough, I could see those leaves tremble. You know I love breaking down the scientific name of various organisms, and this tree is no exception. Its scientific name is Populus grandidentata. Populus refers to the fact that it's in the group of true poplars, and grandidentata refers to grandi, meaning large, and dentata, meaning teeth, so it's a poplar with large teeth, and distinguishing it from the quaking aspen is a very large toothed margin on the edges of these leaves. If you look at this map that I got from Wiki Commons, you can see that this part of Virginia isn't even designated on the range map. But reading further, I found out there are pockets of this tree in the southern parts of South Carolina, North Carolina, Tennessee, and Kentucky, so it wouldn't be unusual to find that tree here too. The Digital Atlas of Virginia lists this tree as a native to Virginia, but it's more common in the area called the Highlands of Virginia. So why is this tree here? Well, it's considered a pioneer species, especially in New England and the Great Lakes region. 
it grows fast, it needs a lot of sunlight, and it's very, very shade intolerant. How does it spread? A tree will produce over a million <laughs> seeds a year. Tiny, tiny wind-blown seeds that can range far and wide to fall in a place they can grow. This area was logged about 40 years ago. And around me here, you can see a preponderance of pitch pines, white pines, and a little bit of Virginia pine that's just fading away. And also with a few shade tolerant hardwoods. This tree behind me here, a fast grower, grew faster than the pines around it. And you can see how big this tree is. And I really believe that this is on the larger size range of this tree. The tree is generally short lived and will usually die out in competition with more of the shade tolerant trees. A stand of these trees will usually last in a forest area for about 60 years before the other shade tolerant trees overtake it. This tree has very shallow roots and it also reproduces by suckers. So often when you find this tree, you'll find a group of them and they're actually clones of the original tree. I looked all around here and I haven't been able to identify another one of these trees. This is the lone one here on my 50 acres. So obviously one of the really attractive things about this tree is this bright yellow leaf. It's so even colored and so bright. It was absolutely eye-catching, both on the ground and in the trees. And I just happened to walk through here at the right time. The bark on older trees, as you can see behind me, becomes dark and deeply furrowed. But the bark on younger trees, and if you look up near the top of this tree, is very smooth and sometimes with some horizontal lenticels, which makes it look a little bit like the black birch trees that I have around here. In the winter, you can identify it by the silvery tips on its buds. And when the leaves first come out in the spring, they're covered, especially on the bottom, with a fine white cotton-like fibers that brush off and disappear after the leaf matures. So this tree, fast growing, shade intolerant, best known in the Great Lakes region and New England, can sometimes show up far south of its dominant range. It's a beautiful, fast growing tree, but dies out soon in competition with other shade tolerant hardwoods. Its main use for wood, it's a kind of soft wood, is mostly used for pulpwood. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door and my enthusiasm in finding a tree that I haven't seen before. Remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel. And remember, I do all sorts of videos. I have over 220 videos on insects and fungi, amphibians and reptiles, trees and insects, and everything in between. Check out my playlist and see if I don't have something there that you might be interested in learning more about. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.